G'day guys and welcome to another one of my Cisco videos, practice questions, uh, network address translation today. So this is going to be uh, really fun to go through a few complicated questions. 253, which of the following implements NAT overload? FAT, SNAT, PAT or JAT? Sounds pretty reckless right there, a few of those acronyms. Uh, the answer is C, PAT, port address translation, which is the answer to that one. 254, your manager has asked what would be a good use of static NAT. Share a single public IP address to all internal systems for internal clients to surf the internet to allow DHCP to assign the address for publishing an internal system to the internet. So go for a couple here and probably eliminate one. Um, since it's static, it's unlikely to need DHCP because DHCP is automatic. So we can eliminate that one. Uh, that's what NAT actually does. Um, that's one there, A. So it gives us B and D for internal clients to surf the internet or D for publishing an internal system to the internet. The answer is D for publishing an internal system. 255, you wish to create an access list to be used for NAT as the insight addresses that will be permitted to use NAT. What command would you use to create the access list? So I'm gonna be careful what we got here. Can nearly roll out the bottom two already. Um, so it leaves us with these two here. Access list 16 permit and then the address there on both of those ones. And I guess explaining this one, so we need access list in there and then a number to notate which, uh, I guess, rule in the access list um, there. And then we also got a permit or deny and we've done the permit for those two there. And with the way it all works, uh, it's not the normal way you would have it there, but um, leaving that dress, address at the front vacant uh, makes that A the answer. 256, your serial port is connected to the WAN environment with your fast Ethernet port connected to the LAN. When configuring that, how would you configure the serial port? So we've got IP NAT inside, IP NAT inside, IP NAT outside, IP NAT outside in different configurations. Since we're configuring a serial port, we've got to be in an interface first, so we can automatically rule out B and C. And it's basically, is it inside or outside? It's connected to the WAN. The WAN is not necessarily internal. Uh, with the fast if more connected to the LAN. So since it is connected to the WAN outside, it is IP net outside. 257, what can mechanism does NAT overloading use to allow one public IP address to be mapped to multiple systems? NAT, TAM, NAC, PAT. It's more acronyms for you guys. And the answer is D, PAT. Uh, I've mentioned before with what uh, the deal is with NAT overloading. So that is the answer once again. PAT twice. 258, you have created access list one that lists the IP addresses for NAT usage. What command would you use to configure the router so that those addresses can use NAT? It's got NAT. So we're in global config mode for all these. NAT access list one. IP NAT interface serial zero zero overload. IP NAT inside source list one. Interface serial zero zero overload. And IP NAT inside source list one. Now, I've got to get our syntax on. So what command would you want to use? Uh, what side pair addresses or command would you use to configure the router so that the addresses can use NAT? Um, so that's not descriptive enough, so it can't be A, IP NAT inside source list 1. Not descriptive enough with interfaces. We need interfaces here, we've got IP NAT serial 00, zero overload, uh, access list 1. So taking account of all that, access list 1 inside source list 1, C is the answer as it's actually specified everything that the question's asked. 259, what type of NAT maps a single public address to all internal addresses? Overloading, static, internal, and public. You wouldn't believe it again, it's overloading, the answer. Pretty much the same reason as the other ones. Uh, the answers that they are overloading is all part and parcel of it. Going back to what type of NATs? Yeah, it's basically what it does, so. That's the answer there. 260, your serial port is connected to the WAN environment with your fast ethernet port connected to the LAN. When configuring that, how would you configure the fast ethernet port? IP NAT outside, IP NAT parallel, IP NAT public, IP NAT inside. So it's either inside or outside, so you can rule out B or C. 
IPing that outside would be if the WAN, if it is connected to the WAN and we're wanting to configure the serial port, but in this case we're doing the fast Ethernet port, which is the internal LAN. So that makes it IPNAT inside the answer. 261, what command can you use to view the IP NAT, uh, the IP, the NAT translation table? Show IP NAT, show NAT, show NAT translations, show IP NAT translations. Blurting out the answer, I'm saying it guys, it is D, show IP NAT translations. We've got a really, 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 really big one right at the end of here, here guys, and I'm not even sure I'm going to read through all of it, see how I go. Looking at the figure below, which of the following would be used to configure NAT on the router? Assume the IP address is already assigned to the interfaces. Okay, we might have a quick look at the diagram. So we've got internet here, that's good. Serial port connected to the internet, so that is outside, connecting to the serial IP net outside. And then we've got the router here, then the fast internet going to a switch, and then going to two computers on a subnet. Uh, 192.168.464 mask 27. So I'll let you guys, if you want to pause, welcome to pause for a sec if you want to see what the answers could be. But um, I'll just go, th I might even just explain the answer and why it is the case. So I'll, the answer is, um, before I go through to it, is D. So we've got access list one permit, and then the address range. It gets pretty complicated with subnet settings here of some more subnetting. Um, obviously, you've got that command there. Assigning it to the rule number one permit or deny. They've gone permit, which is correct in this scenario. And then we've got the address range there, which correctly applies with the subnet. Feel free to go back if you need to reference it. Um, I could go back and forth a hundred times, but I might just explain it here. And we've got uh, 00031 as the uh, subnet range there, I believe. And we've got IPNAT inside source list one interface serial overload. So that from there is essentially assigning it to the source from the LAN interface. And then the next line we've got here, which is doing a bit of overloading. So that's assigning all the private addresses to one internal address assigning through that list there so for the internal network which is the LAN area IPNAT inside that's where that comes in interface serial 00, zero IPNAT outside that's correct because the serial one uh, sorry the serial 00, zero is going out to the internet which is the WAN interface so that's outside and we've got interface fast Ethernet 1 and that's IPNAT inside because that's the internal network Hopefully that one somewhat made sense, that, that part there is sort of a submitting, subnetting segment. Might make a bit more sense uh, if I had a good idea of subnetting, but I'm not the subnetting master, unfortunately. Ironic. But um, that's all, folks. I uh, hope you've enjoyed another Cisco adventure. Uh, I've got my website there, onlinecomputercoaching.com. I uh, would really appreciate it if you check that out and uh, suss out plenty of free content, free videos, and podcasts and all those sorts of things. So... Do yourself a favor and check that out and uh, subscribe away for more videos. Making one man very happy clicking that subscribe button. So I would really appreciate you guys getting on board the Cisco roller coaster and uh, would really appreciate you joining in. So thanks very much for hanging around, guys. I'll see you all next time.